Today is Wednesday, the 17th of January. Welcome to our morning devotion. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In the morning, O Lord, you hear my voice. In the morning, I prepare a sacrifice for you and watch. My mouth is filled with your praise. And with your glory all the day. O Lord, open my lips. And my mouth will declare your praise. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. And we'll consider this morning the words of 1 Peter 2, verse 9. But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for his own possession, that you may proclaim the excellencies of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. There is a great difference in the status of the children of God in the Old and New Testaments. In the Old Testament, as St. Paul writes, those children stood under guardianship. They were not allowed to deal with God directly in all things. The mediators between them and God were the priests. In the name of the people, the priests arranged the public worship services, brought God all kinds of sacrifices, and entered into the holy place of the temple in the grace of God, who was present there. The priests explained the law of God, decided between clean and unclean, bestowed the blessing of the Lord, and represented the people with their prayers to God. Therefore, whenever an Israelite wanted to be reconciled with God or cleansed from sin, desired to bring him a sacrifice, or sought to turn to him in petition, he was directed to the priests. This did not happen because Old Testament believers did not yet stand before God in grace, but rather as a testimony that their promised and expected Messiah would first have to reconcile man with God. And, proclaim, and provide free access to him. Therefore, after the New Testament was established by the death of Christ, the curtain that had hidden the Holy of Holies from the covenant people of the Old Testament was ripped in two as a sign that the Levitical priesthood with its privileges was now finished. A new holy priestly covenant people was hereby created making everyone a priest of the Most High God. And so it is. According to the testimony of the Holy Apostles, all believing Christians are priests, and the whole Christian church is the temple, the house of God, in which they serve under their only high priest, Jesus Christ, who by his own blood once entered into the Holy of Holies, that is heaven, and established an eternal redemption. St. Peter emphatically declares this new status for believers in today's reading. Here we see that as soon as a person becomes a Christian by holy baptism and receives the Holy Ghost, he is anointed a spiritual priest. As long as a person preserves his baptismal grace or having lost it by unbelief, he obtains it again by true repentance he is and remains adorned with the holy privileges of a priest of God. A Christian needs no mediator in order to deal with God. Day and night, he has free access to his heavenly father and his throne of grace, and he receives grace upon grace from Christ's fullness. To be sure, God provided in the New Testament that particular persons should handle his means of grace in public offices, preaching his word, administering his holy sacraments, and shepherding Christ's flock. However, preachers do not form a particular class like the priests of the Old Testament, who alone were entrusted with certain spiritual gifts and rites. Therefore, throughout the New Testament, the church's servants are never called priests, but instead they are known as elders, teachers, servants, and stewards. 
They have an outflowing of the rights and gifts of the spiritual priesthood of the Christians they serve. They are not lords or exclusive possessors of certain treasures that the so-called Christian laity does not have. They are rather stewards in public offices of the rights and gifts that all Christians possess. Therefore, through their faith, Christians are free lords over everything, and by love, they are the servants of all others. In judgment over spiritual things, they are subject to no man, but alone to the word of God. God has established them to be watchmen and judges over their teachers. And so we pray. Thou art, O Holy Spirit, the true anointing oil through which are consecrated soul, body, ease, and toil. To Christ, whose guardian wings, where'er their lot appointed, protect his own anointed, his prophets, priests, and kings. Amen. And we pray. Almighty God, merciful Father, who created and completed all things, on this day when the work of our calling begins anew, we implore you to create its beginning, direct its continuance, and bless its end, that our doings may be preserved from sin, our life sanctified, and our work this day be well-pleasing to you, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And we also join together in prayer. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger. And I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings in life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul, and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen.